Does anybody have any idea why mobile shopping is so popular in China compared to the rest of the world? Yes? Maybe they, haven't, they have no computers, and just one mobile phone. Yeah, yeah that's, that's indeed part of the reason is everybody basically has a, a mobile phone and 74% have a smartphone but a lot of people don't have a computer or can only use a computer they, uh, they have in the office. So there are a lot of Chinese people that don't own a computer and their only possibility to shop online is through their smartphone. Which is probably also one of the reasons why they wanted a smartphone uh, so much. If you, um, if you look back about 10 years ago, a lot of the Chinese people, the only possibility they had to go online was at a cyber cafe where most of them would be chatting or would be playing uh, video games the whole night. But they didn't have a laptop computer or, um, or a desktop computer at home. So China is one of the countries in the world with the most, the highest penetration of mobile shoppers. So, and I don't know if you guys ever heard about the, uh, the terminology of mobile first. People that develop websites, they sometimes in the West say it needs to be mobile first and it needs to be responsive, it needs to work well on a smartphone. Because more and more people will start to shop online. Well, if you don't, if you don't have mobile first in China, you're basically, you're dead. So you, it's, it's a requirement that you definitely need there. Some more reasons for, uh, for M-commerce growth. The penetration of smartphones in the countryside also. A lot of, of cheaper phones that people are, are buying there, uh, especially in the low-income uh, groups. New means of mobile payment like Alipay. Alipay also has a possibility now to, uh, to pay through your mobile phone. And WeChat is another possibility. And the increase of the coverage of mobile internet is also uh, getting better and better. Now, if we think back about the, uh, the figures that we saw at the beginning of the 50% of the people that are not online yet, one of the big plans or projects of the government is to increase internet access in the rural areas. Because when people go online, they will start buying online and it will stimulate the domestic consumer economy in China. So, extremely important. But a very, very big factor in this whole thing has been the rise of cheaper smartphones in China. Now, who of you has this phone? The iPhone 6. Yeah, is it good? Yeah, it's expensive too. Yeah. So this, this is um, a price I found for this product in, in the Netherlands. It's almost uh, 750 euro on cool blue. And this means that in China, this might be 800 or 900 euro because they actually pay more for these products because they get re-imported. They might be manufactured in China, but they are exported, re-imported re again, and you pay import tax. So these are even more expensive in China. Still, Apple iPhones are extremely popular in China, but a lot of people simply cannot afford them. Now, this same phone has an alternative which in tests was, uh, came out of tests as being even better than the iPhone 6. And the price in China is 420 euro. And, and this specific phone is their most expensive model. And what they also have is they don't just make phones. They also, does anybody use a Fitbit fitness band? Now, I wouldn't buy something like that for, uh, for $100. But I did buy this one for 13 dollars. It's the, uh, the Mi Band. And again, when they tested this, and when they compared it, they, they basically concluded that this thing is as good as this one, but for a fraction of the price. And the company that's been doing this is a company called Xiaomi. Xiaomi started making really cheap but good quality Smartphones, you could buy in China for about 100 euro or maybe a bit more, a very good smartphone. And this was the first time that uh, people that didn't have a very high budget were able to buy a smartphone and go online on the internet. So a lot of the growth that you've seen earlier on in this presentation is only also thanks to Xiaomi and some other manufacturers of low price, high quality smartphones. Now, it's not just the phones with Xiaomi. Again, it's, it, the innovation is more in the whole business model that they are using. 
And the business model has several components that, especially combined, have never really been seen before. First of all, very low margins on their hardware. They, don't, they, they hardly make any profit on the mobile phones they're selling. Why not? Maybe it's not about phone. Maybe, it's, maybe the phone is not the end product, but the phone is a distribution channel for other products. So you might sell other things to these customers through a smartphone. And you need to think about Kindle as an example. Amazon tries to push the Kindle, not because they want people to have, a, have an e-reader, but because people will be buying through the Amazon website all of the e-books. So what Xiaomi is doing is they make a lot of profit on apps and virtual goods like e-books, like selling themes, and they sell a lot of games. So this is where they make their money. They say, if we make these phones good quality, nice design, and really cheap, people will start buying other products through these phones. And they do all of their sales directly. So they don't have any middlemen. They, they don't have any distributors. They sell things directly through their customers. And most of the time, they do this through flash sales. And anybody that's ever been in a flash sale is, is going to be extremely irritated by the way this works because basically what they do is they only have a certain number of phones available and the week before they start selling these you need to register and when you register you get an email that next week at 12 o'clock on Tuesday you need to log in and you need to see if you're one of the lucky people that can buy one of those smartphones one of those brand new model smartphones now this both creates a feeling of scarcity because everybody is extremely excited and, and wants to try to get one of those new phones. But at the same time, they also get an idea about how popular this phone is, how many people are signing up to have a chance, and they thereby can calculate how many they need to manufacture. This is also one of the, the reasons, one of the ways they keep the, uh, the cost very low and they can sell it at such a low price. So when you do something like this, in a flash sale, you log on on the Tuesday at 12 o'clock. When it's 12 o'clock, you see their, their, their mascot, their bunny, their Me Too. You see that bunny running as if he's trying to catch up with one of those new smartphones. And most of the time, you end up with this crying bunny that's, shit, you're not one of the lucky ones this week. So try again next week. I've bought the uh, Mi Note Pro, the, the one of 420 euros you saw earlier on, and, and I tried for five weeks to get one of those phones. And every week it was the same thing. And after five times I, I said to my wife, she's Chinese and she's helping me, I said, just, just forget it, I don't, I don't even want this phone anymore. And then, just at that point where I, I, I wanted to give up, they said, we're doing no more flash sales, from next week on it's available for everybody. Because then, after a month, they know exactly how many they need to manufacture, how many they need to make. So that's what they, they do for, um, for the forecasting. The forecasting based on the registration for the flash sales. And they also analyze how much people are talking about this new phone online. Because that also gives them an indication of how popular it will be. Then they manufacture it just in time. They have a turnover of about seven, uh, seven days in their warehouse. Most of the products ship immediately when they arrive in the warehouse because they've got the back orders. And they do all of their marketing. They hardly do any mass media marketing. You won't see a lot of Xiaomi advertising in magazines and, and on television or on billboards. They do, do it through Weibo, the microblog, through WeChat, their own platforms um, and their own uh, shopping mall all of the promotion done online. And the distribution is also done online. They don't have any stores. They sell straight through their own uh, shop, online shop, and through their Tmall shop to the customers. So you don't have a lot of middleman costs either. So what they're also doing recently is they are still building stores now because people want to feel this new product and they want to touch it and they want to see it being able to hold the physical product. So they've decided they need some kinds of shops, but it's mostly more a demonstration shop than it's actually um, a shop that, that sells these products primarily. They have their own operating system, the uh, MIUI, which they update every week. And by all of this, by all of these things together and all of this social media chatter and, and community, community building, they've built 
very big fans of the brand, very big me fans. And here is where the basic, the most important secret of this company is. Because if you have fans that have your, your phone, and it will probably take at least one year before they buy a new phone, what will they do? What will fans do? You want more. You want more of this same brand, but you already have the phone. But if this same brand would be selling other products to you, you might be very interested to, uh, to do that. So they've created a wide range of products, often made by third, third parties, and they slap the Xiaomi label on it, and they sell it to their fans. Hugo Barra, uh, he used to be um, working for Android, and a few years ago he started working for Xiaomi. And you often see him presenting new models, like the new Mi 5 phone in Barcelona recently. And he said, what it's all about in China, what you need to do is you need to create like this walled garden. And people need to stay in your garden. So you keep, you keep them happy within their own garden. I have a Xiaomi garden at home. And I'm, I'm going to show you what my, uh, my Xiaomi garden looks like. Of all of the stuff that this company has been selling to me. So in the morning... This is my phone, the Mi Note Pro. The alarm goes off on my Mi Note Pro. I take this phone from the phone stand, the Xiaomi phone stand. It's extremely cute, isn't it? So I pick that up, and one of the first things I do is I sync my Mi Band, I sync my Mi Band with my telephone. And then it tells me how long I've been sleeping and how much deep sleep I've had. And then again I said, ah, oh, yeah. I, I, again, I didn't go to bed on time yesterday and I haven't slept enough and that's why I'm so damn tired every morning. So it creates awareness about how I should handle my own health. But it gets worse because then after that I walk into the bathroom and I step on my Mi scale. And I look down and go, shit, this is not good. So what I've done, if I've put the weight of my wife in this presentation to... Uh, <laughs> Uh, otherwise it would be too embarrassing. So again, that syncs to my phone and it's, it, it stores it in, uh, in this, this Xiaomi app. The next thing what I do is during the day I know that I should lose some weight. So frequently I check my, my telephone to see if I've had enough steps, if I've had enough exercise, if I've been walking enough during the day. And that is also done through the, uh, the Mi Band and, and this application. Somewhere in the afternoon, I get a bit bored, I get curious, so I log in to my Xiaomi Yi Cam, which is normally pointing at the place where our cat is sleeping, and I, uh, I check out what he's doing at home at that moment. And what you can do is you can push a button here, and then you can actually talk through this, uh, this, this camera, which also always scares the hell out of him uh, when I start speaking to him. And this is the look of surprise that you normally see him. In the meantime, my wife might be studying Dutch, plugging the Mi light into the Mi power bank and then have some light to study by, or she might be watching some movies on the Mi pad. And this is just some of the, the products that, that I'm currently using, but if you're in China, they have got so many different products that you can buy. You can buy the Mi television, you can buy the Mi router, you can buy the Mi air purifier, very important if you live in Beijing, for instance. You can, again, these people are fans, so they want merchandise. You can buy me merchandise, t-shirts and, and sweaters and, and all kinds of stuff. They have a me light, a sort of a mood light. They have all kinds of smart devices for your home. And recently they have seem to be going a bit off the road and it seems to be getting a bit strange because they're now also selling headphones sort of a Segway type product, and the, the strangest one I've seen so far is they're selling suitcases. Now this has nothing to do anymore with, with mobile phones, so it's starting to get a bit, maybe a bit too far. But if you, if you realize that all of these Mi fans are buying all of these different products, you can, can imagine the, the potential sales per fan. And, and this is what uh, Hugo Berra has to say about that in a recent uh, launch of the Mi 5 in Barcelona. So by doing all of this, if we go back to the smartphones, you'll see that Xiaomi in a couple of years has become, within China, the best-selling brand of smartphones, leaving all of the other different brands behind them.
Of course, companies like Huawei, they are selling a lot of phones outside China as well. So as a company, they're much bigger than, than Xiaomi. But Xiaomi has become, at the moment, the most popular brand. But it doesn't mean that an innovation of, of like, a, again, sort of an ecosystem like this will mean that you have sustainable success for a very long time. Xiaomi, at the, the start of 2015, said they were going to sell 100, 100 million smartphones. After a couple of months, they said, oh, shit, we're not going to make that. Uh, we're got only going to sell 80, but we really think that we're going to sell 80. So this is our new sales target. And they ended up selling 70 million. Still a lot of phones. But you see that the enormous growth they had in the, the previous years is getting harder. And this is also getting harder because they have not been able to convert iPhone fans to Mi fans. Because an iPhone in China is also about mianze, about status. So you want to show people that you can afford this, this iPhone. And that you don't have to go to a, a cheaper uh, Xiaomi model. Also, what's happening now, those people that have been buying the very cheap Xiaomi telephones, they are now upgrading. They are upgrading, they want to have a more expensive phone. And they want to maybe have a phone that's, that's like twice the price of the previous one. And Xiaomi doesn't have, until the Mi 5 was released last week, doesn't have a lot of phones in that specific segment. So they are now, they need to change their strategy.